The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you have markets. Quite a difference a week can make. Picking things up in positive territory. You're winding seven days. And yeah, we were in negative territory kicking off last week. How about the drive to 5120? We begin this Monday. 260 points higher that's about five percent above where we were yesterday uh, excuse me last monday just to illustrate kind of the rebound the volatility right let alone where we were wednesday to the beginning of thursday we got it all back yet again and we are higher above where we were at all we're coming into the opening bell in green prices across the board with the s p's up by 11 at 53.82 we got a big week of economic data We'll get into it in a moment, but the market's in positive territory. NASDAQ 100 up by 48 points, about a quarter percent in the green. The Dow up by a tenth of a percent. Did I not get you my chart yet? Hold on. Shame on me. I didn't, did I? Thankfully, my producer, Al, he's on me. Thanks, pal. Apologies for that. It's coming. And... There's my chart. Shame on me. Okay. Uh, checking out the S&Ps. Thanks, Al. Uh, yes, down to 51.20. We began things last Monday, and we are trading at 53.82. You see the melt. Friday, a little bit of low volatility. We melt higher in the overnight session Sunday night. We're higher, make, just made pre-market session lows of 53.89 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 up by 49 points, 18.665. The Dow up 49 as well. One tenth percent and the Russell barely in the positive. We'll call it flat at 2,090. We jumped to the VIX. That might have been the biggest spike of all in terms of markets. We haven't seen a VIX like that since COVID, which is absolutely bonkers when you think about how far this market ripped lower. It just kind of illustrates when things go bad, things can go bad. You really had some fear out there with the carry trade getting unwound. You saw the VIX spike to 65.73, just like that. We're back to 20.56. But it is interesting, all those spikes we got in 2020, besides the initial COVID spike, 2021, 2022, that VIX spike we got last week, far above anything this market had seen. We'll keep our eye and see if that comes back or if it was just a one-off. Bitcoin. Yeah, reclaiming a lot of the losses we had last week as well. We're at 60,000. You were as high as 62,000 on Thursday. Ethereum, 26.95 right now for Ethereum. You jump over to crude. Higher prices continue to come at you for crude. We're trading at 77.90 right now. And let's just back it up on a 10-day. Last Monday, we were at $71. You're at $77. We're pushing 80 right now in the price of crude. You jump to gold, higher prices as well. Gold. Everything had a sell-off a week ago on Monday. Gold spiked to 2403. We're back to 2482 in the price of gold right now. And we jump to the all-important notes and bonds. After quite a jump higher, we've paired things a bit. We are still just under 4% right now in the 10-year. We were as low on yield. When we jumped up on the 10-year to 115.03, the yields on the 10-year where I think 3.68, 3.67, something like that. We're sitting at about 3.95%, just under 4 on the 10-year as we come into a pretty important week on economic data. The 30-year right now, down 5 ticks, 122.24. We check in the dollar index as we finish the wrap-up here. You get the dollar sitting at 103.25, we'll call it right now, in that dollar index as we come into an important week of economic data. And the S&Ps... Sitting a solid 5% off of where we were just a week ago, let alone we're still well off the highs of 5,600 that we made at the beginning of August. And then you back it up even a little bit further. Is that the high? 5,721? Yeah, it is. All-time high, 5,721. Made about the middle of July. It is interesting. We're almost a full month past that high. Time flies, man. Time flies. And yes, we've gotten quite a pop. But since we were there July 16th, okay, that's a daily. Now we can zoom in on the four-hour. 
Uh, point being, lower lows, lower highs, quite the exacerbated sell from that price point of 5600 down to a price point of 5120 That's 480 points, folks, that we traded from August 1st to August 5th. Yeah, from Thursday a couple weeks ago to that Monday tough open, you were down. Is that right? Yeah, 480 points on a 500, 5,600 point index. That was an 8.57% decline, right from where you were. Uh, the point, And then we popped 5%. The point being, volatility is here. Okay, this is another week. Boy, we got some economic data coming down the line. And so here's where, here's where it comes. Tuesday, tomorrow, we get the producer price index, okay? That's a precursor to probably the main event on Wednesday, which is the consumer price index, the CPI. We get the CPI out Wednesday morning. The expectation right now, where we are, we're looking for about a 3% headline number on the CPI, and we're looking for about 32 to 3.3% on the core side. That's year over year. And if that's where we are, you can make the legitimate case that the Fed is at 525 to 5.5% in their overnight lending rate. Consumer prices are somewhere between 3 and 3 and a quarter percent. The Fed is a solid two percentage points above even where inflation could be if you're putting it at the 3% number. You can make the case there's probably some lags in this economy that are working out. Seems like they have the ammunition that might be necessary to make a cut or two. Where do they go from there is going to be the real question, right? That is going to be the question in terms of where we go from there. Uh, because when you start getting down to 4.5 or 4%, there is a very real case to say, hey, if inflation is raging between 3 to 3.5% and you're going to bring the Fed overnight lending rate down to 4 to 3.5, what if you guys are a little bit off and inflation comes back up? That's the argument you're going to hear, and it's a right argument. And with that, we jump over to some Fed speak. So we, uh, the last part of that is we get CPI on Wednesday, you get retail sales on Thursday. Okay, and then you get Michigan sentiment on Friday. But the two big ones there, PPI on Tuesday. Remember, PPI Tuesday, producer prices. CPI, consumer prices on Wednesday. That's going to be a big one. And then we get retail sales on Thursday. So don't get lulled into thinking volatility has gone bye-bye. It is still here. and We have a long way to go to get out of where we are right now. And where we are right now is we are at a point where the CPI is still coming in at 3 to 3.5%. You still have the Fed at above 5.25%. They're going to begin cutting. But what happens when they begin cutting? Well, what happens is, is that we might still be in a pretty healthy economy. And there are some risks that persist on the inflation front. What's going to happen with housing? You're hearing this conversation a lot more, right? Last week, inflation, uh, excuse me, mortgage numbers at about 6.5%. If the Fed cuts six times, which is what the market's thinking, you could see mortgages down to 5%. If we get mortgages down to 5%, folks, watch out in this housing market because people who are on the sides, right, rightfully so, on the sidelines, can't afford the payment that they thought they could afford before rates spiked. They're looking at monthly payments of houses when they're at 7%. All of a sudden, they go to their mortgage broker. They're looking at that same exact house on what a monthly payment will be. On a 5% mortgage, I mean, it's like found money, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see. But guess what? The Fed, they're not quite there yet. And we got some Fed speak even out over the weekend. The Fed's Bowman sees upside inflation risk, signals caution on cuts. We'll talk a little bit of Fed. We'll talk some markets. We got a lot to talk about on Monday, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. we got markets in positive territory to kick off the week with the S&Ps up by 11 right now, NASDAQ up by 40, Dow up by 52, the Russell positive by three. We jump around to some of the Magnificent Seven as we kick off the trading session. you got Apple shares basically flat. We're up by about 20 cents right now to kick off the trading session with the opening bell about 11, points, uh, 11 minutes away. Excuse me. You have Amazon a little bit higher. About a buck fifty to the upside, trading at one sixty-eight thirty-four. We jump over to Microsoft shares; they're positive by a buck seventy as well. As you get the Nasdaq one hundred up by about two tenths percent, you have these equities up in positive territory as well. You jump over to Meta shares; uh, Meta a little bit in the red at five sixteen thirty from five seventeen. We jump over to Tesla shares, getting a feel for some of these big stocks. Tesla basically flat to the penny almost, trading at two hundred dollars. We'll call it, and we jump over to Nvidia. Nvidia higher yet again by about uh, about about buck sixty. Yeah, not bad. Nvidia from one hundred four seventy five, one hundred six thirty one. Last Monday we were at ninety. You see why those dip buyers come in, man? You get it right. And just like that, we're up sixteen dollars. Now this is remarkable, man. When you look at the volatility some of these companies have. So Nvidia traded down to ninety dollars. They have twenty five billion shares outstanding. 24.598 so 24.6 billion shares we rounded to 25 billion shares for simple math 25 billion shares outstanding and they're up 16 dollars from where this thing was trading at a week ago well folks that's 250 billion for 10 and then you got another Geez, 100, 150, 400 billion dollar market cap rise from where this thing was a week ago let alone though Okay, the more interesting conversation is, right, is that at $100, NVIDIA has lost $1 trillion in market cap from where it was at its high. You think volatility is not here for a while, folks? 
maybe in the den somebody can help me out. How long did it take us to have a trillion dollar company overall? I think it was 2019. Remember the race was on? Who was going to be the first trillion dollar market cap company? Was it going to be Apple? Was it going to be Amazon? Microsoft was in the running, I think, as well. Who was going to be the trillion dollar company? Well, now it takes basically less than a month or two for a trillion dollars to get wiped out in market cap. So be careful in these equities when a trillion dollars in market cap can get wiped out in the span of June 20th and we hit 100 by August 5th. And the real story there is there's no dramatic weakening for this company. OK, it's one thing if you come out and there's a huge uh, rewrite of forecast. Maybe there's even a scandal in their books, right? Something like that. No, there was no scandal. There was no nothing. They come out with their earnings May 22nd. They were gangbuster. They blow it up to 140. The markets get skittish. You pull back a bit. Just be aware, man. And I think they come out with their numbers in about a couple weeks right before Jerome Powell is in Jackson Hole. So you're going to get some volatility, man. You know, we're getting a little bit of a lull right now. But this is the calm before the storm. As I mentioned, PPI tomorrow morning, CPI on Wednesday, retail sales on Thursday, Michigan sentiment on Friday, and earnings throughout the whole process as well. All right, so back to the Fed, because this is what you want to keep your eye on, man. All right. And the headline here is talking about Bowman. OK, Michelle Bowman. Is that say? Yes, Michelle Bowman. And this is what you it's going to be interesting to see where the data goes this week and then what Powell has to say about the data when we come into Jackson Hole. OK, but. There's a very real case for this argument to be made, even, oh, you know, as the market gets ahead of itself. And listen, the data may prove this argument wrong, but that's where the volatility is going to come in, okay? Because there is a risk, like we were just talking about. What happens to the housing market alone, okay? Rent as a part of CPI in particular, now the Fed prefers the PCE, which is the personal consumption expenditure. You have the CPI, which is the consumer price index. That's one inflation gauge. And then you have the PCE, which is the personal consumption expenditure. Rent is, I think it's like 40% of core CPI or CPI. It's a dramatic number of CPI. I'll try and get those numbers at the break, okay? It is a dramatic number of CPI, housing price, a huge component of CPI, because think about what you spend your money on as a quote unquote consumer. People usually spend almost a third of their income on rent or a mortgage, et cetera. So as a result, it is a huge component of CPI. Well, what's going to happen when the Fed, let's say the Fed cuts a percentage and a half because the market's saying they may cut six times right now. That's a percentage and a half. Let's say they cut a percentage and a half. There's no way that doesn't help housing to a bit. Okay. Now what you are going to face is you're going to have people where the supply of housing is going to come back where it hadn't been for some time, right? There's a lot of people who have been unwilling to sell their homes because how else are they going to get back into a home and replace the mortgage they have that's at 3.5% or 4%, right? That's going to change. So you will see some supply, but there's no denying the fact that, you know, there's a supply problem in houses no matter what. And if you give people the ability to buy a home with a 5% mortgage, you're going to see a demand increase on dramatic. And that is going to push prices and push inflation back up. Okay. So how does that go? Now, some of her quotes out here. The progress in lowering inflation during May and June is a welcome development, but it's always a kicker when you know the butt's coming, right? Inflation is still uncomfortably above the committee's 2% goal. I just told you. CPI and core CPI are going to be expected to be 3 to 3.2%, okay? That's well above where the Fed wants them. Now, you can make the case that they're on their way and there are lag effects that they need to get ahead of. And you can also make the case that even though they're at 3 to 3.2 percent right now, that the Fed is way above where they need to be. And this is the this is the separation that you got to get your, your brain around, OK? Just because they're going to cut doesn't mean they're not going to be restrictive still. That's where you're going to hear the nuance, OK? The Fed is going to make the case that they still want to make sure they're restrictive, but they don't need to be as restrictive, okay? They're not cutting to spur the economy right now. They start cutting to spur the economy, then watch out. That means the market's in trouble. They're not doing that just yet. All right, they're trying to cut 
at a time when they don't need to spur the economy. They just want to restrict it less to make sure they don't drive it into a recession. But inflation is still uncomfortably above the committee's 2 percent goal. OK, she said this in the speech Saturday to the Kansas Bankers Association in Colorado Springs. I will remain cautious in my approach to considering adjustments to the current stance of policy. Yeah. And there you go. All right. Now, the PCE is at 2.5 percent in the 12 months through June. OK, CPI, though, a little bit higher. The Fed prefers the PCE because it's a better representation of the basket of goods that we use and that we are exposed to in terms of the costs and inflation and how it hits us. But yeah, some of these numbers, man. The recent jump in joblessness to 4.3 may be exaggerating the degree of labor market cooling. The rise in the unemployment rate this year largely reflects weaker hiring. We'll finish this up because you're gonna hear this battle play out. We're coming back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July July 26, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up by 12 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 29. We'll see if we can hold on to the gains as we come into that opening bell. The Dow up by 35 points right now. The Russell up by two. So jumping back to Fed Governor Bowman, who is a voting member this year. Okay. 
the rise and the, and I go over this because if you can figure this one out and get ahead of the market, you'll make a lot of money. That's that's you figure this one out. This is going to be the battle that persists here, right? Where is the Fed? Where is the economy? Are they late? Are they early? Nobody knows the exact answer, but that's our goal, right? To try and get ahead of some of that rhetoric and figure out for yourself where we are in this economy, where the market is. Is the market ahead of itself? Is it a little bit over its skis in terms of saying that we have all these cuts coming down the line when inflation could be something that's a little bit stickier than even the market thought. And maybe all the data that we've gotten is a little bit overblown in terms of the rise in joblessness. And this is what she talks about here. The rise in the unemployment rate this year largely reflect, reflects weaker hiring as job searchers entering the labor force are taking longer to find a job while layoffs remain low. That's a little bit different than a weak economy that's forcing people to lose their jobs, et cetera, right? She acknowledged the risks of waiting too long to cut. Well, good for her. As a Fed governor, I hope she should acknowledge those. Should inflation continue to improve, it will become appropriate to gradually lower the Fed funds rate to prevent monetary policy from becoming overly restrictive. She also emphasized officials will receive a range of new data, including one employment and two inflation reports before they meet in September. Well, yeah, you're going to get... <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to get uh, that inflation report, one of them, this week with the CPI coming out on Wednesday. And as I mentioned, PPI is in there too, but that's not what she's referring to. Um, you get two separate inflation reports right now. We're getting the inflation report for July coming out. They're also going to get the inflation report for August before they meet in September. So get ready for some volatility, though. You saw the huge reaction we could see when the market gets one single data point and how we go from there. But maybe people are reading a little bit too far into that. It all depends on whether the lag is real. Has the the has the trend changed, right? And is the trend intact? Or are we just seeing some volatility as we've seen before? As in the beginning of this year, right? Let's just pull up notes and bonds for a moment. Your tenure. The beginning of the year, we were right where we are right now in the tenure. Okay, you have the tenure at under 4%. We kicked off the year. You got all the way almost to 5%, right? And then you got back down to 37 But we've been here before. We've been wrong before. The market has been resilient before. We'll see where we go from there. It's an interesting one, though, when you see a voting member of the Fed coming out and saying, hey, you know, some of these data points that we're getting here might not be exactly what – you think they are. We do have unemployment rising to 4.3%, but that could be because of weaker hiring versus layoffs, etc. And as I speak, the market rolling over a bit. You just had the Dow slightly in the red. We'll see where we go from here. All right. What else do we got going on? Let's see some of the stocks that are moving this morning. Starbucks, they're positive. Only because maybe they'll get a little bit of... Uh, an impetus to make some change over at Starbucks. I think it's Starboard coming in for Starbucks. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah, Starboard Value took a stake in the chain in an effort to boost the stock the stock price as the activist investor comes in for Starbucks. So Starbucks man, quite the pullback. Back this thing up on a monthly, and pretty remarkable. You have Starbucks at seventy six bucks. Meanwhile, you were at sixty four bucks in two thousand fifteen. You're talking about over a nine-year period. This is where diversification, man, especially if you're relying on anything in terms of retirement, diversification. Because who would have thought that Starbucks, over a period of, we'll call it nine years, it's almost nine years, would go up by, what is that, 20% at a period of time where you've seen the S&P over that time what did I say, 2015? Whew, look at that. We almost tripled in price. Yeah, Starbucks has some problems, man. But they got an activist investor, and it is pretty remarkable they got some problems when you think about it. We all know Starbucks is packed, man. Packed houses across the board. Yes, it's been quite a run. And that's cherry picking a bit because, yeah, you're up 20% from where you were in 2015. But this equity ran from a 10-bagger. Right, even more. You were at four dollars in two thousand nine, and you drive up to sixty four dollars in twenty fifteen. This is almost a good lesson in the markets in general, man. Right? Things don't go up forever; they don't go down forever. 
the returns we're seeing in this market are fantastical, man. The NASDAQ 100, okay, doubling in price over 18 months. This is an index, folks. It's not one equity. You can't have 100, 100 stock indices doubling in price over a period of a year and a half and not expect some type of volatility coming down the line at some point. So just be aware of that, man. Because this market has been like nothing I've ever seen. Pretty remarkable. But Starbucks, nonetheless, they are trading higher. Eli Lilly, they're higher as well. You get an upgrade for Eli Lilly. You talk about a stock through the roof, man. These GLP stocks. GLP drugs, I should say. Yeah, and you give back some. But look at these two pops. They pop on their earnings. They pop on Friday. They pop higher today. As Deutsch upgraded them to a buy from a hold. They cited the re recent earnings beat and called the stock a low beta, high growth unicorn. All right. On the flip side of that, watch out for JetBlue, folks. It just doesn't stop, man. They're trying, though. They're trying. But guess what? The market's saying, man, you're putting us at risk by trying when you're going to dilute us with convertible offerings out there. But nonetheless, they need it. They're down by 12%. They announced a $400 million of convertible senior notes due in 2029. Yeah, I don't know about this equity, man, but, you know, the chart, what do we got here? They're, they're at $1.8 billion, the whole company. Think about that, right? This entire airline is only worth $1.8 billion. You're trading at $5. I have, you know, the chart going back to them goes back to 2002, which is, I think, when they went public. You run up to $31. I mean, just these airlines, man. Yeah. And you can see when this thing needs to base out, look how long it takes to base out, even if they don't go BK. The problems from 2008 crisis, you didn't take back off until basically the middle of 2013. And we're in another doldrum here. And nonetheless, you're down... 11%. So, you know, you think there's not risk buying JetBlue at $6. You wake up today, you're down another 11% as they are raising $400 million in a convertible note due in 2029. Some of the other stocks that are moving this morning. Robinhood, they're up by 3% right now. They get an upgrade to overweight from neutral at Piper Sandler. And they're talking about continued growth in retail and derivatives trading. Yeah, options trading, man. These companies make so much money off of options. And that is what people like to trade these days. Continued growth in the retail, global retail and derivatives trading. Yeah, this is what Piper Sandler put out. As the generational wealth transfer from baby boomers to their children. Okay, and maybe those children are going to start trading options more than the baby boomers are. Nonetheless, Robin Hood a little higher. Market gives it back, though. S&Ps, you were positive by about 12. You're positive by three right now. Now rolls over negative 75. We'll take a look at some other equities. When we come back, folks, don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. And the market's getting ready for some data this week. And they're saying, guess what? It's going to be a little bit of a risk off, even though it looked like it was a calm open. We got markets trading lower. The S&Ps just give up 20 points just like that, man. S&Ps negative markets right across the board. NASDAQ 100 negative by 28. S&Ps negative by 5. You get the Dow rolling over negative by 111. And the Russell uh, negative by 10 as well. We check in on crude. Higher prices coming at you. Crude right now up a buck 31. If you haven't filled up that gas tank, go check it out. You got the dollar climbing higher as well. Uh, excuse me, gold. Excuse me, gold. So crude higher. Gold higher up by $20, $24.93. We jump over to the dollar, dollar weakening, right? That would make sense. You got a weaker dollar. You got commodities trading higher. We jump over to yields right now. <clears throat> and... Yeah, we're just chopping right now. Nonetheless, you get the 10-year negative three ticks at 112.28. So some of the headlines out there in terms of what I was looking at last night, this morning. And it is interesting. Let's jump to that dollar yen before we do it up, actually. Because, boy, it was all the rage last Monday, man. Yeah, and you're back to a weakening yen to 147 right now. We'll call it 148, basically. We were all the way down to below 142 last Monday. And some of these numbers. So right on the front page of Bloomberg, and this is where we go. Carry trade blow up. Hots markets rattled by rapid unwind. The yen surge showed havoc as traders dumped assets to repay loans. Brief global crash shows risks fanned by Japan's low rates. Yeah, I would say so, folks. And what's interesting is... Is this is everywhere okay now that's the one from Bloomberg this one is dated yeah last night at six o'clock updated 2 30 in the morning and then you have a journal article out here last night as well this one investors borrowed like crazy during the rally now they're paying the price behind the market tumult of the past month the rapid unwind of several popular trades and the heavy use of leverage one of them they're talking about here is the yen OK, and when you get into some of the numbers that they talk about here in the yen, some swapped yen for dollars, for instance, to buy higher yielding T-bills. We know that that's the that's the trade we're talking about. Right. You borrow yen, you turn it into dollars, you buy the higher yielding T-bills at a July peak. Hedge funds and other speculators short bets on the yen were worth 14 billion dollars. Yeah. Another sign of building leverage, Japanese banks' foreign lending reached a trillion dollars in March. Yeah, a 21% jump since where you were in 2021. But guess what? The trade unraveled over the past month as the gap between the U.S. and Japanese government bonds narrowed. It came under new pressure when the Bank of Japan raised rates, driving up the yen and forcing these trades to unwind by Tuesday, okay, of last week. 
Those bets against the yen had plunged more than 80% from the peak to a more modest net short position. So 80% of the shorts were out. But guess what? It's coming back, right? It's coming back. We'll see where we go. Uh, we will see where we go because if we ever get another reverberation, man, it seems like the Central Bank of Japan has already wavered a bit talking about easing. They were freaked out about what they had done. And we'll see if the U.S. because you have you have the whole dichotomy, right? You have the the Bank of Japan saying, hold on a second. Maybe we're going to stay easing for a while. The Nikkei just crashed 12 percent in a day. Everybody chill out. And at the same time, then you have voting Fed members like Bowman coming out over the weekend saying maybe this unemployment print isn't as bad as it seems, saying maybe we don't need to drop rates as fast as we need to. So maybe we'll stay high. So the rhetoric now becomes the U.S. Fed saying maybe we'll stay higher than the market thought and the Bank of Japan saying maybe we're not going to rise as quickly as we thought. That's the exact problem that got us into this, right, that had all those trades. And meanwhile, you have the Fed speakers going right back to that. Uh, and back to the Bloomberg one, carry trade blow up haunts markets rattled by the rapid unwind. And yeah, you had the, the wind, the re unwound, unwind, I'll get there, uh, to a pretty dramatic degree. And that's what I want to get to right here. Yen funded carry trades have capitulated. And look at the total return and how it crashes. Yen funded total return. We were up to 17.3% in July. And that crashed almost nothing. You wiped out almost all the gains. You got to 3%. It's back to 6% now, probably because of what we've seen in the yen happen, right? Yen, dollar, etc. But you talk about a wipeout, man. And that's why everybody was selling, selling, selling to get out of that trade as fastly, as fast as they could. And yeah, that was a complete wipeout of liquidity that we saw there. And be aware that uh, that may not be done yet, as we still have trades in that arena going on. All right, we got a little bit of weakness right now with the mess and P's off by 15. Let's see how some of the Magnificent 7 kicking things off. Amazon down about 3 tenths percent. Apple shares this morning positive by about 2 tenths percent. We jump over to Meta shares, slightly in the red. We jump over to Google. Yeah, slightly in the red. No huge moves for these tech companies just yet. Tesla down 1.3%. NVIDIA shares up by 2.2%. AMD slightly off. We check in on Intel. Yeah, watch out for Intel. Intel and JetBlue. Watch out. JetBlue down by 11.1%. Challenging the recent lows we've had dating back to April. On that equity, we were just above 7. Just like that, you wake up, you're down another 11%. Convertible notes. Watch out for those, baby. All right, what else we got going on? Let's see. Qualcomm going to downgrade. Let's see how they're trading this morning right now. Qualcomm down 3.9%, well off the highs of $230 earlier this year. You're trading at $158 right now. Wolf Research downgraded them to a peer perform. Yeah, Apple using its own internal modem will finally have an impact is what they're talking about there. Premium Android has now um, has by now normalized. Yeah, and it's the growth's going to be a lot tougher to sell investors as Apple using its own internal modems will finally have an income impact on Qualcomm. You take a look at the long-term chart of this thing, right? Watch out. And that's one that did get back above where you were in that dot com. You got to 100, you got back down to 11 bucks. It took you how long? What year are we? 2020 took you 20 years to get even on that equity. And we're back down to 157. From 2.30, just like that. A little volatility on Qualcomm, persisting, to say the least. All right, we check in on Disney shares. Disney down by about 6 tenths percent right now. It's continuing to struggle for Disney, man. Well off the highs of 123. And you look at the volatility even this morning. All right, that's a bad print. I was like, did that really get down to 82? No, that's a bad print. Um, they had their event over the weekend. They're going to spend a lot of money. They're going to have a new... A whole new feature of their park, right? It's going to be the bad guys, or what do they call them? The, um, I'll look up the term. But nonetheless, they're going to pump some money into prequels, into sequels. It seems like that's where Hollywood always goes these days. But that is their bread and butter. When you have the likes of Inside Out 2 doing $1.5 billion, you have Deadpool and Wolverine. They're going to break a billion dollars out there as well. And then you have Moana 2 coming out, probably going to break a billion dollars this year. Guess what? What's the common theme there? What's the common theme? The common theme is they're not originals. So they take the good movies that deliver. Instead of just plowing out a million names, it's going to be quality over quantity. And you got Inside Out, which already had one. That's the second one. Deadpool and Wolverine, that was bound to be a hit. 
and then Moana 2, all of them, uh, on the heels of Blockbusters prior. All right, folks, one more segment. S&P is negative by 12. We'll come back. We'll take a look at these markets. Don't go away. Be back in three minutes. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the gold contract right now. Higher price on that gold contract. We're trading up $22 at $24.95. You have some of the gold equity spiking. We got Barrick Gold up a dollar, up by 6.2% over there. You don't go to Harmony, up by 1.1%. Hecla jumping around to some of them, up by 1.2%. Endeavor, ooh, look at EXK, man. Down by 14%. What's going on over there? As I'm just jumping around. Oh, they got a big problem. So they got something going on at one of their mines. Yeah, Endeavor Silver Shares trading lower after the company announced the trunnion on the primary ball mill at one of their mills has failed and could take 12 weeks to fix. I think that's what's going. Yeah. Oof, they got a failure in some of their equipments. 12 weeks, that is a problem. Down by 13%. But nonetheless, some of those gold equities, they are trading higher right now. Jump out of Valley. 
Yeah, but Barrick, they're talking about Barrick over there in the YouTube Tiger Stand. Check that out. Trading higher by 6.2%. And I bring it up, folks, because if you're checking out the gold port, today's a great time to do it. Tom O'Brien, my dad, he puts out new issues every Monday. You can sign up for the gold report right over here on the front page of TFNN. Check that out. And don't forget about the special he's got going on for Market Insights as well. You can check them both out. I always tell people, encourage Check out a couple letters. You still get a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers. You want to keep one, you cancel the other, get a money-back guarantee. You want to keep neither of them, get a couple money-back guarantees. Uh, that 30-day money-back guarantee, good for each product when you're new to it, right? It's a way for people to try out each of the services that we offer. But you can save 75% off Market Insights. Check out those positions my dad's had in there this year. Just enter code MI. 75 off at checkout mi 75 off and you'll save 75 percent off the first month and it still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee can't beat it and uh yeah as i stress you know the one thing i'm confident that we have coming down the line folks you know where i know what i believe that i'm confident about this market that we got some volatility for a period of time yeah you're going to see it play out, man. We got PPI tomorrow, CPI on Wednesday, retail sales Thursday, Michigan sentiment on Friday. We're just at the beginning. S&P's off by 18. Coming up next, Steve Rhodes, Larry Pesavento. Have a great one, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.